Honestly, it's bigger to go to Wesco. They think they're coming to beat us, beat us again, but we're, we're working, we're working. Thank you, sir. They were working, and they were working nine months to get better than Weslico, who beat them 3-0 in the playoffs last year. 13-7 with just over four minutes left, and Weslico's Brian Guerra hits a 96-yard touchdown. That gives Weslico the one-point lead. But back comes Harlingen on the big drive. Leo Tienda scores with 30 seconds left. That is your go-ahead. Harlingen comes up with a big defensive play to end it, and Harlingen wins a huge game. 20-14 is the final. Now they get ready for district play. We got three seasons. We got the non-district, then we got district, and then we got the playoffs. So we ended up victorious two and one. So, you know, we still got a lot of things to do, get better at. But the bottom line is the good thing that I saw, I saw some, some young sophomores step in and take charge, which is good stuff. We'd like to mention that that one loss of which Manny Gomez spoke was a game against San Antonio Reagan where they led 28-14 at the half. So this is a pretty good non-district schedule for the Harlingen Cardinals. Joe, let's talk about the final 10-play drive, 72 yards, took about three and a half minutes, and this was the stuff legends are made of. And it was with all poise. I mean, there was no panic. Uh, the coach talked about later on about he watched him grow up, and he said, you guys saw him grow up before your eyes, this football team. And it was methodical. It, there was no panic. There was no rush. Uh, there was a touchdown call back in the drive on, a, on this great flea flicker type play, but uh, they just kept going, going. There was a touchdown call back the play before the score, and yet they still lined up, score the touchdown, win the football game. Impressive. Impressive indeed. Harlingen gets it done. Yeah, they, Leo Tanda was called down on that one, even though his hand went across the uh, line, but the ball didn't. But that's okay. He scored on the next play. Uh, Greg, a win like this for Harlingen, a, a rivalry game against Westlaco, it can really propel a team going into the district play, can it? And I feel like they've Harlingen's really shown that I think they're one of the elite teams in the Valley this year. With this win, with what they get, did against McAllen High, I've been impressed with them. And especially Leo Tienda. You guys see those highlights. He's taking a beating out there, yes. and that kid just keeps going. He had a really nice game there, and I think he'll have a big season. He's a Timex watch, takes a <laughs> licking and just keeps on ticking. Uh, one of the mighty mites that are getting it done, him and Ramon Espinosa at, at Roma, neither one of them too big, but both of them getting it done. But now what about Wesico? As they start district play, they're going to be going up against PSJA North coming up this Friday. PSJA North coming off some tough losses as well. Uh, Let's go ahead and make our picks on this game. Greg, what do you expect to see when this district opens in 31-6A? Well, I've got Westlaco in this one. I think just by being you know, in a game with Harlingen as close as they were, that they're pretty elite, too. I like their running game, and I like their defense a lot with Jordan Nichols at linebacker. They do have a tough defense through the Panthers. Joe, your thoughts? Well, everyone talked about how big Harlingen was hitting Reagan. Well, Westlaco's defense was hitting just as hard as the Cardinals were, and, and that's got to be looked at. So I'm going to pick Westlaco in this ballgame and a big comeback for them. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm also going to go with Westlaco in this one. And uh, uh, PSJ North switching out quarterbacks this last week. Oliveras out, Fuentes in. Uh, you know, PSJ North looked good at times in offense, but not quite as consistent as they did maybe in that first week of play. So I've got the Panthers winning this one. Meanwhile, let's talk about another game that's coming up. And this one could be a big one. We're talking about Hannah and San Benito. And this one in the district opener for 32-6A. This is probably the top game of the district this week and uh, you know Hannah has proven they can do things they almost beat within a two-point conversion of beating Donna they were 2-0 and before that uh, San Benito so was trading punches with McCallum Memorial the whole time Greg who do you have winning this game I've got San Benito I really really in that McCallum Memorial game was impressed with their skill players so I'm expecting a big year for them I think they're getting into the playoffs your thoughts, Joe? I think San Benito kind of got worn down in that football game. I don't think Hannah has anything near the physicality to wear down that football team, and San Benito is going to get better as the year goes on. San Benito wins this. Uh, no, it's a battle of two impressive quarterbacks, Andy Lopez, the senior uh, for Hannah, J.R. Gaetan at San Benito. But uh, at home, at Bobby Morrow Stadium, I think it's all hounds all the time in that one, which could be, you know, this one could decide who goes to the playoffs, even though we're just <laughs> starting district play. But we are just starting here on Sunday Sports Extra. When we come back, we're going to talk about the big passing game uh, by Mission Veterans and the aerial assault that they have. Plus, we'll talk about Roma proving it again and again and again, this time against Palmview when Sports Extra continues.